And actually, what I was going to talk about is faith is humility. <laughs> and she was, she, I could feel the presence of God right in what she was saying. It's yes. like, she's speaking truth, and she actually believes what she was saying. Amen. Faith is a substance. And a lot of people see faith as some type of floaty thing, and it's not. It's real. It's Jesus. Um, and Jesus was the most humble person that ever walked. Yet he was also very bold. Humility is not led by a spirit of fear. Because fear is not from God. Scripture tells you to stir up that gift that is in you. And it also, right around there it says, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So when we start acting like we're humble, out of the sense of the spirit of fear, we're actually having a false humility, which is pride and stinks before God. Because true humility is to agree with what the Father says about you. Jesus did it all the time. I touched on this last night with the Pharisees where he had said things to them and they really didn't like it at all. And, and they, but he would speak scripture, he'd speak truth. Because your value is never based on what people say about you. Your value is based on what your Father in Heaven says about you. Because that is a thing that is unshakable. That's a thing where you're going to come out of the fear of man and into the fear of God. And it says that the fear of man is a snare, but if you read half a verse, you'll be stuck. You've got to read the other half of the verse that says that those that fear the Lord or trust in the Lord, He will bring them above that. He'll put them on high, place them on high, depending on what version you're reading there. And because that's the thing, you can't fight the fear of man. You've got to have a bigger fear, which is a pure fear of the Lord, which is not torment, but it's love. Because fear produces torment. So if you're ever questioning what does humility look like, look at Jesus. And I know even in the old covenant. Moses was foreshadowing something about Christ. And like, you'd have to check this out, but in the book of Moses, didn't it say Moses was the most humble man? And who wrote that? Moses. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of blows your idea. You knew me out of the water, doesn't it? No. But I can imagine the conversation with God while he's writing that is, God, how can I write that about myself? People, think, people are going to think I'm arrogant for saying that. And he said, just write it. He's like, okay, God. And so he just writes it. Because humility is agreeing with God. Faith is agreeing with God. They overlap so much. They interlink so much. That's how children enter into the kingdom. Because it's made for people that do not place their opinion above the opinion of God. Because that is the place of deception. When you think that you know better than God when you, <laughs> when you don't. Um, there is a confidence in God that will look like pride to man. Jesus did it all the time. I mean, there was times where he was violating their traditions. I mean, he's, and they're trying to trap him. And like, is, it, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He confronts him and says, hey, if you have an animal that falls into a ditch, are you going to get him out on the Sabbath or not? Why would you not do that with a person? So he cut straight to the heart and he took care of that because he never addressed things as a purely physical battle. He always saw everything as a spiritual battle. So therefore he was never intimidated by man because he realized all devils were under his authority. Amen. And it was the devil that was speaking through that person. So he was able to address that thing right away and bring it back into order and never agree with it. Because when you bow to the fear of man, you're bowing to that devil. Yeah. And that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. So never do that again. Never do that again. It is humble to receive grace. 
when you receive grace, you stop struggling. That was Paul's thorn, where he was struggling with something, and God just like, my grace is perfect in your weakness. He wasn't saying, suck it up, Paul. He was saying, I'm giving you the power to overcome it. And it was humble for him to say yes to that, because in his weakness, God's strength was made perfect. So if you think that you can't do something, stop relying on your own strength and switch to Jesus. Just like that. I almost imagine like in a Geico commercial, switch to Jesus and save 100%. Everybody can do an Australian accent and fit just perfect. But um, when you switch to Jesus, you're no longer limited with your own knowledge. You could, because of the gift of the Holy Spirit, He will bring you before great men. And that's something I'm getting out of Proverbs, and I'm seeing it out of the new. For some reason, I've never seen the scripture the certain ways, like, your gift will make room for you. Well, how much better in the new covenant we have the gift of the Holy Spirit, God Himself in us, that we are able to go before people that we never dreamed of going before because of God. And it's not humility to hide behind the baggage, like Saul did. It is humility to have a heart after God, like David had a heart after God, where he said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. He messed up, and then, yes, Lord, okay, turn around, go the other direction. Because um, that's the thing, too. It's, it's, it's humility to receive forgiveness. When you messed up, it is not humble to beat yourself up over and over again. It's to say, yes, Jesus, I'm clean because of you. And that is so freeing, and that is the good news that you can share with somebody else, is you don't have to live under the bondage of your past. You don't have to live with all that shame and all that junk forever. Whoever told you something has to take 50 years to get healed inside is wrong. Because when you focus on Jesus, it's not hard at all. It's just like, that wasn't hard. Because your focus is different. Every problem looks small in the eyes of resurrection. And that is, that is, centric theme of Christianity. It's resurrection. Like, why should it be considered incredible that God raises the dead? Like, people base their whole faith on one person being raised from the dead, Jesus Christ, yet when you ask them about, well, should we go out to the church for resurrection? Like, well, I'm not really sure about that. Like, our whole faith is based on that. And just because we haven't seen it doesn't mean it's not true. And I know some of you have. I know some of you have. Um, and more of us are going to. So I just want to stir that up within you that you, when you see somebody dies, you don't just say that's the end of it. You actually go after it. Amen. And, and something I, I watched several months ago was Faith Like Potatoes. Watched it actually several years ago. But something would pop inside of me when I watched it this time. And it was the two scenes. The one scene where his um, fellow worker dies and he goes to in a lightning storm, he gets struck by lightning and dies. And the other one is where his nephew gets run over by a tractor and he's coughing up blood and it's just a mess and he's getting overwhelmed. The only difference between the time that he got the miracle he did, and this isn't to be critical on him at all, it's totally understandable, it was nephew, he got overwhelmed. But the only difference was between those two instances is where one he was focused on what he saw and the other he was focused on Jesus. When he was fixed his eyes and standing on the scene, the unseen manifests in its reality right here, right now. Like he had to have a he had to have a point of release where you can't always be striving, striving, striving towards it, because you'll never get to the end. You gotta realize your starting force is the end, which is Jesus, who is the beginning and the end, and he covers everything. He covers all things. And nothing is limited in him. <laughs> He's got all power and all authority and all dominion. All things are under his feet. And Hebrews says that all things are under Christ's feet. Under, and it's talking about our unitedness with Jesus as a man. And it says, though we do not see all things under his feet. In other words, we're supposed to bring that reality that Jesus says this is true. And we're supposed to make it manifest. And when doctrines tell you everything is just going to get worse and we're not going to do that or it's only going to partially see it, they're wrong because they're telling you not to grow up be like Jesus. But you got to grow up. you got to grow up. You know what a body looks like that doesn't grow up? It's not, it's not cool. <laughs> it's not cool to have your diapers change when you're 20 years old. And, and I'm not saying that to shame anybody at all, but it's like that is a work of the devil. 
to keep people immature and fed by one person and never growing up into all things in Christ. It says that we will grow up, and that's the reason for the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Did I get all five? Yep. Okay, whatever. Look it up. Ephesians. You say them a little faster. Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. That was the purpose of them, because they're all showing a facet of Christ, because Christ walked in all five. I mean, look at him. He was one of the well evangelists. He was, he was the shepherd of our souls. He was, um, what else? So the pastor was like a shepherd. Yep, same thing. Okay, and then he was, he was prophetically releasing, releasing things. And I mean, he could tell people what they were thinking. Um, he, was, he was apostolically sending people out, his disciples out. He was putting them to work. And what was the last one? Oh yeah, and of course he taught all the time. So you can see all five in, in play. Yeah. Um, and so my my question is, can you really do that? Can you really be like all five? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well actually, the, the point of the fivefold is to get you so you're operating all five. So if you're weak in one area, that you get strong in all areas. Because Jesus is strong in all areas, and Christ in you is strong in all areas. So if you have him in you, then it's no big deal because he just flows out. It's just like a river. It's like multiple aspects, multiple streams just flowing out of you. Or maybe you're flowing in one area, and the other area it seems like you're completely in unbelief, and you just nothing's flowing. <laughs> And so it's, when you get around people that are flowing in that area, then they just kind of pop that doctrine demon out of you, and then you're good, you're good to go. <laughs> you're good to flow. <laughs> I've never said that before either. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so stay here. Stay. Stay. Okay. 